What's up everybody out there in uh, internet pirate land? This is gonna be the part two video of the Jade Bearer Magic the Gathering card that I drew last time. It's uh, this right here. So I took inspiration from this card, like the description and the title, and came up with my own illustration. And if you uh, go back and watch last week's video, I'll link it somewhere, description or card. But if you go back and watch last week's video, you'll see me do the line work for it. And now we're gonna do the color. Before I get started on the video, I wanted to tell you guys about new upload schedule and new kinds of videos. So I'm gonna do two different kinds of videos. I'm gonna do this kind of video, which has some learning aspects to it and mostly conversation and, and, and I don't know, <laughs> some art. And uh, I'm gonna do another kind of video where it's just a time lapse. And I'm gonna try to do one of those each week. So two videos per week. So make sure and hit that subscribe. So make sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss either one of those. All right, so we're just about ready to uh, get started. I'm gonna be working again with watercolor pencils and I do this quite often just because they're easy, easier. Um, basically what it is, is a set of colored pencils, water. This cool thing you guys have recognized from other videos, it's a water reservoir with a brush tip. Invaluable for art. Okay, so we left off last time with just plain line art in my sketchbook. Um, it's inked really cleanly and really nice and the ink has had time to dry so now I can go over it with watercolors but for future reference and I never do this because I don't know why but uh, sketchbook paper is not recommended for watercolors it warps like crazy and if you're not careful it's just a big wrinkled mess uh, anyway this one didn't turn out so bad though Colored pencils are always like super challenging because they, for some reason for me, just don't blend very well. I don't know why I can't get like a smooth transition. Uh, maybe I've never bought the most expensive kind, maybe that's what it takes, but I just refuse to buy the most expensive kinds of things. <laughs> Anyways, so that's why I got these watercolor pencils. They're super cheap. I think they were like five bucks or something from, uh, from any art supply store but they blend so much better and they have the detail of the pencil so you can get in with the tight spaces and go over with the water to make it blend better. So what I'm doing on this uh, jade bear here is I started with the most important part, all the jade jewelry and getting that two-toned color was a lot of fun. You go over it with uh, to, you know, lighter and darker colors, and eventually uh, you get this kind of uh, shine shimmer kind of illusion going on with these things. To accent the jade a little bit more, I'm putting a blue color in, in between the shadowy areas of the green. That kind of makes the lighter areas stand out a little bit more against the darkness. You always need some darkness to make the light stand out. Bob Ross quote. I don't really know what these things are. They kind of look like leaves, but I was trying to go for uh, fins. But it's fantasy piece. Could be anything. Thank you. 
Blending two colors together is a lot easier with the watercolors as well. So in the tail fin area, I'm blending the blue color of her body into the, uh, the red color. And it kind of creates this sort of purpley sort of deal, which makes it really, really nice. Now that this thing is, is done, I don't feel like it's really done. I, I want more of a completed illustration. And you should always think about this because the background is so important. It, it actually tells a story along with the artwork so people can get a sense of where the character is and what the character does. And I don't really know what the character does, but it's, it's definitely uh, somewhere. I'm thinking like a like a jungle sort of thing, and I'm trying to do uh, this stone arch, kind of give a sense of uh, age to the area where she's at. So it's gonna be like some ancient source of magic from thousands of years ago or something like that. I mean, she is supposed to be a shaman, if I read that correctly. One thing that I did find super challenging with, with these is trying to not make it too muddy. I'm trying to make a really detailed and interesting background at the same time, not take away from the character in any way. I wanted to have the arch kind of underneath the water, or maybe the, the area flooded, and I don't really know what the deal is, but uh, so how I did that was I just laid some darker color, but I didn't draw the full on uh, stones. I just kind of gave an impression of some darker colors underneath the water. So I know the video is uh, time-lapse art, but um, I hope you've been able to follow along a little bit. The way these watercolor pencils work is you just use them like regular colored pencils and you can use them like regular colored pencils and you can stop there. But uh, once you add water to them, you're able to get a lot of really cool effects. Uh, it helps to blend them a lot easier as you've heard me and seen me do in the last couple of minutes. But um, also you can get some really cool like glossy effects by just moving the water around. As you can see here in the necklace, just from where the water is placed on the edge of the stone, it blended that, but it didn't blend the middle, which means the middle is lighter. And it just ended up looking almost like a real stone. Uh, to continue the background though, I've got this sort of vine jungle sort of thing that I'm going with. But it doesn't need to be perfect, it doesn't need to be detailed, it just needs to give the impression of a jungle. Just like, uh, just like the stone underwater, just the impression is all we need. So I'm going with just these, these vertical curvy lines, just uh, gives the idea of trees back there, or large vines, or something green. And I can go darker colors on the inside, lighter colors on the top, and that gives the impression of shadows. I'm also going to throw some ink onto these stones and maybe a little bit of the vines too, just to define the edges a little bit and just to make it really pop without, without it being too overbearing. So we're getting close to the end here and it's just about done. I definitely want to encourage you guys to uh, check the description, check my social accounts. Definitely go back to part one and watch that. Watch all the other videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.